So let's examine the following example that deals with motional EMF that is EMF induced as a result of a moving conductor. So a conducting rod is moving to the right with a velocity of 2.0 meters per second as shown in the following diagram. So we have our stationary U-shaped wire and we place a conducting rod onto our wire and then it moves with a velocity of 2 meters per second to the right. And the entire system is found within an external field B that points out of the board as shown by these blue dots. Now the resistance in the rod, in the conducting rod and in the wire is given to be 5 ohms while the length of the rod is 20 centimeters. So the length is 20 centimeters. If the external magnetic field is 0.8 teslas in part A, calculate the motional induced EMF. So to calculate our induced EMF, we simply use the following equation which we derived in a previous lecture. So the motional induced EMF is equal to the product of the magnetic field B, our length of the rod L, and our velocity given by V. So 0.8 teslas multiplied by 0.2 meters multiplied by 2 meters per second, where we took this quantity divided by 100 and converted centimeters to meters. So we multiply and we get 0.32 volts is our motional induced EMF as a result of our moving conducting rod. Now, let's move on to part B. In part B, we want to calculate the induced electric current inside our wire. So, inside the following section. So, we essentially use Ohm's law. The voltage, or in this case, our induced EMF is equal to the product of the electric current I and the total resistance. So we solve for I and I is equal to the voltage divided by our total resistance. Now the voltage in this case is simply our induced EMF which we calculated in part A. Now the total resistance is simply the sum of the resistance found in our rod as well as, as in our conducting wire. So because these two resistors are placed in series, that means the total resistance is given by taking the sum, where R1 is simply the resistance in our rod and R2 is the resistance in our wire. Now we're given that the resistance in the rod and wire is 5 ohms each. So that means 5 ohms plus 5 ohms gives us 10 ohms. So 0.32 volts, which was calculated in part A, divided by 10 ohms gives us 0.0 3, 2 amps is our electric current inside our U-shaped conducting wire. And finally, let's move on to part C. So calculate the external force required to keep the conducting rod moving with that constant velocity. So our velocity is constant and some external force is creating that motion. Now by Newton's second law of motion, the sum of the forces acting on the rod is equal to the mass times its acceleration. Now because the velocity is constant, that means our object is not accelerating, so m times a is equal to zero. Now, notice there are two forces acting on our rod. There's the net magnetic force, which points in a negative direction along our x-axis, and there's also that external force that we're looking for that points in this direction. Now let's choose this direction to be positive, the other direction is negative. So force external minus force magnetic is equal to zero. So we equate these 
to forces and we see that our external force is equal to our magnetic force and the magnetic force is given by taking the product of the magnitude of our magnetic field B, our electric current I and our length of this section of our conductor. Now, recall that in part B, we were able to find our I. We know what L is and we know what B is, so now we can solve for the external force that is required to give our object a velocity of V, a constant velocity. So, 0.8 Teslas multiplied by 0.032 amps fan in part B multiplied by the length of 0.2 meters gives us a force of 0.00512 newtons. So this is the magnitude of our external force that acts on our conducting rod to move it in the positive direction along the x-axis with a constant velocity of 2 meters per second.